guys. So the AKG 414 is a large um, condenser microphone. And it comes with these nice shock mounts. So we're going to take advantage of those. You'll see on all mics that um, there's two, this one in particular has two distinct sides, right? There's a black and a silver side. Um, and so the every microphone will have a, a logo on it. And counterintuitively, the talent speaks into the logo side. So this is the side that is picking up. Now, if this mic were in a different pickup pattern, it wouldn't matter which side you talked into it. But um, this one is a, is a switchable. You might be able to see on here that you can switch the polar pickup pattern on this mic. Do you want to send that one around to John? You can. So you can actually switch this to be in any pickup pattern that you want. So it's a super flexible mic. Um, but we're going to use the silver sides um, to be getting sound from this piano. So these, um, you just put them in here in these shock mounts, and everyone's, all, they'll all be different. And you just screw the bottom here. Um, just turn the bottom, and then it's in. You're going to make sure it's in. So Colin, if you want to put that one in to the other mic stand. So you're going to put it in, and then just screw the bottom. Just always keeping a nice firm hand on the mic, right? And then which one? Just the big one. Yeah, but yep. are you going to point it this direction? Uh, well, we can change it later, but yeah, that's either way is fine oh. for right now. Okay. So now we're going to want to get the mics into this piano. So we have a few considerations um, of which way the mics are set up, what polar pickup pattern we have, and the source. So where does the piano make sound from? Um, the strings. The strings, right. So we've got these hammers that hit the strings when you press the keys, right? So we've got sound emanating from here. And the piano is an interesting one, the grand piano like this, because with the lid up, we're going to get not only the sound that the strings are making and vibrating through the, the harp here, we're also going to get sound reflected off of, the, off of this wood. So we can see or hear, we can try to, to hear if we hear any difference between direct recording on the strings or setting this into a different pattern that gets both the direct from the strings and the, the wood. Please don't hit the piano with the mic stand. So be aware of like where the where the bass is and where you're sticking in and out. And then when you um, use the the boom arm on here, this one looks like it's missing its um, it's missing a thing here. But uh, this will extend out. And so just keep a keep a firm hand on on the mic stand. Make sure that it's not going to tip over. Um, these are pretty heavy. They shouldn't tip over. But just you know, be aware of the physicalness of this. Uh, the other mic. So the two other mics that I have are um, this is uh, these are Royer 121 mics, and these are ribbon mics. And th so they're they're not dynamic. They're not condenser mics. Totally different um, ribbon mic. And um, I really like these on the piano. Um, Piano is a, so when we were at the radio station just a minute ago, we were talking about um, the warm sound of vinyl. These are the warm, these are very warm sounding mics. And um, these mics um, are, uh, these are Rode NT, NT2, NTG2, um, shotgun mics often would be used in video production. Um, I would not normally choose these to record on a piano, but we're going to try it out. So you can see that this is my laptop, and this is the this this computer here. Um, so we have two different Zoom. So I'm going to open up. Um, I've got a Logic project here, uh, right here, um, and what we are going to try to do is, um, and I'll need somebody in here helping um, when I'm in there. But we're going to have just one project. It has two, um, two tracks in here that I've set up. 
And we'll have to figure out where we're plugging the mics in and all of that, where this is going to get its input from. But ultimately, we're going to record two mics into two distinct tracks here in, in Logic. Um, and we'll just record the test that we do. It won't be anything pre-recorded. <laughs> look, there's people in the studio. So today we are, uh, we've pre-baked a little bit of it, but we're going to walk everybody through this process of recording this beautiful grand piano here and Studio A. And um, what we're going to do is we've got two, um, two mics on two mic stands, and we're going to record um, audio from, from this piano. We're going to run the cables um, from these microphones, and we're going to go into a patch panel that's in the wall, because um, we don't want to run the cables directly into the control room, because we want to close the door. So this is a very common technique. And then I'll show you the control room side also so that you can kind of get the whole setup of what we're doing. So these mic stands are um, on these mic stands. You will maybe see that we've got these. Um, these are AKG 414 microphones. Colin is being an excellent camera person. And uh, these are uh, large diaphragm condenser microphones. And before you came online, uh, we all talked about these. In order to make the condenser microphones work, we need to give them power. So we're going to also need to turn on phantom power um, to get any kind of signal from these. The, um, these mics are, um, like all, all mics, um, have a logo on them. And you, you might not be able to see it online, but we pass this one around, and I'll pass it around again. There's an AKG logo right on this microphone. And on the other side, there's information, but no logo. And this particular mic is nice because it has, um, I'm gonna, um, pass it around, it has two different colors. So the, so the side that is picking up sound is um, the silver side on, the, on these microphones. These microphones are nice because they have uh, a selectable pickup pattern, so you can change their polar pickup pattern. Up until this point, we've just been using one microphone, right? And with that one microphone, we've really been recording one audio source. Usually it's your voice, sometimes it's an instrument. Um, and that can work really well for a lot of situations, but then there are times when you're going to want to have a stereo recording where you can really um, get a richer sounding recording and you can also um, deal with stereo placement. So you'll see often if you go to a concert hall, there'll be like microphones hanging from the ceiling. There'll be a, a stereo pair of microphones that are used to record in that space. Um, every time you add a microphone, into the mix, you sort of exponentially increase the complexity of your recording situation. But um, if we have one mic, and we think about one mic in unidirectional mode, meaning it's picking up from one direction, and we add another mic that's also unidirectional, and it's picking up from another direction, this is a common stereo placement. If we switch these microphones, instead of being both unidirectional and we made them both cardioid, we would get different pickup pattern that would sum together, would be different when you put two of them in a space. And so it's like Venn diagrams, right? You take the cardioid pattern and you add it to the other cardioid pattern based on the way that they're angled to, to really isolate where you're picking up sound from. So if you um, have them both set to omnidirectional, picking up from everywhere, then you're probably going to get a pretty similar sound from both microphones if they're close to each other. But if they're far away from each other, you might, you'll get different sounds from them. So there's really, there's a lot of ways that recording engineers have um, tweaked around and tried to figure out ways 
that work for, for doing stereo recording. And when I say work, it's sort of in quotes because it all depends on what it sounds like, what you want to get from it. So there's no right way, but people are like, this is my trademark way. And there's three of them that I want to have you know about because they're the most common ones. Uh, so this is when I turn into my air traffic controller. Um, if you have, and, and it doesn't matter what pickup pattern you have set on the mic. These are like mic placement um, properties. So if you have two mics that are kind of two points in space, fairly close to each other, maybe three feet apart from each other, um, they, we call that AB. Often you'll see that in a concert hall or in a lecture hall, right? If somebody's trying to record in a big classroom, they might have these two microphones AB. Um, if you want to record, um, a, so that's good if you have a pretty big space. On the mic, on this, on the piano here, we probably, we don't have a big space. We have a kind of a small space that we're trying to record. And the piano, if you want to come closer, even in this piano, you'll see, um, you can physically see in the piano, it's a little dark in this room, but there's, the, the bass notes, the low notes on the piano, have these really quite long copper, copper strings. And then the higher notes are these silverish ones um, that, that travel on this side of the, on, of the soundboard. And so they work the same, but they sound drastically different, actually. And so we want to make sure that we get because the piano has a quite a large pitch range, we want to make sure we can accurately get both the low pitches and the high pitches. Um, so we're going to use uh, we, we'll try we can try out different techniques, but I'm going to recommend we start with what's so A B is two points in space. The other one is X Y, which kind of looks like an X, um, where you take the two mics and you put the the heads of the mics as close as possible together, not touching, but close to each other. And uh, those mics are then, are gonna get, this mic is gonna be recording sound from that direction, and this mic will be recording from the other direction. And so it gets you a nice stereo field, but you don't miss the middle, right? So if you were in a, if you're in an orchestra, and you had your mics really far apart, you're going to miss all the best players that are in the center circle of the orchestra, right? You want, you want to make sure that you get them. So XY is a good scenario for getting a stereo field um, that really gets good coverage. And then um, the other one, so you have um, AB, XY, and the other one. So instead of having two mics that are with the heads really close to each other, the heads are actually pointing out in opposite directions that way. This can sometimes um, be more intuitive uh, because right is right and left is left instead of the other way. Um, it can give you, uh, if you were in the piano, it might give you more of a separation between the high and the low sounds. Um, so we can try out some of these things. So those are the three, A, B, X, Y, O, R, T, F, which is like some French name uh, that's the other, is how I think of it, the other way, O, R, T, F, and it's the French radio station used to do all of their recording that way. There's a million, you can do middle and side, you can have them so that they're this way, you can have all sorts of combinations. Gets kind of interesting if you're into that kind of thing. Every time we, uh, so let's, uh, we're going to make sure that when we put these um, mics into the piano area that the shiny silver side is facing the sound source. And um, if somebody, uh, where's that other mic? Awesome. Come on, you can just put it right back in here. And, um, and get these so that they're um, going into the piano here. I'll put this one in. So these are shock mounts for, for those that weren't here. Um, the shock mount in here lets, uh, gives a nice, um, a nice way for this mic to, to really have, you can 
jiggle it around and it's not going to be as harsh. Don't really need it in a studio, but for this setup, but we have them. All right, so we're going to, uh, if somebody could take uh, two somebody's and extend these boom arms and put one of these mics so that it is more directed toward the low strings and one of them so that it is more directed to the high strings. And then while they're doing that, I got some mic cables here. So here are our XLR cables. And um, what I'd like you to do is um, plug these cables in to the microphones. And I hope that they're long enough. So on these mic stands, make sure that they're um, nice and, and tight. Um, we often break mic stands around here, <laughs> uh, but because the weak link is the plastic on the, on the dial, you want them, you don't want your mic to start out at one angle and then <laughs> droop, right? Because it's pretty top heavy um, with a microphone on it. So um, if we had this set up right now, what is this? This is A, B, X, R, uh, X, Y, or O, R, T, F? A, B. A, B. Yeah. So um, we're going to try it. And I'm going to suggest getting them even closer to the strings. So that might mean you need to lift the bottom so that it doesn't hit. So we want to make sure that the mic stand does not hit the instrument. This is the most beautiful piano on campus. It's an, it's an amazing piano. Um, but if you were recording a violinist or somebody with their fancy pants million dollar instrument, uh, you would not want to be banging your microphones in, into it. So always be kind of aware of the physical surroundings as you're going. Awesome. So now let's have, um, let's plug those mic cables in. Um, we could have plugged that, the cable in earlier, but Either way. <laughs> so now, our challenge now is that we've got the cable, and John, you're doing just right. So what is making you run the cable around the stand? So you don't hit anything. Yeah, so it doesn't drip into the piano. Oh, yeah, too, yeah. Um, but also, uh, it's a really good practice to, to do, uh, to loop the cable around the stand because if somebody were to trip over this cable, it's not going to pull on the microphone. It's going to first pull on the stand, right? So you're not going to break your microphone as easily if it's wrapped around. Um, and we're going to take these cables. So these are XLR mic cables. And we have to get the signal to the computer in the control room. And what we're doing is um, in this studio, there's patch panels all along the walls. Some of them are covered by the black, blackout curtains. Uh, but I exposed this one, and this one is labeled Studio A PPA1. Studio A patch panel A1. So this is, we're going to, we, we would normally just plug in here, but I can see that there's already a bunch of junk plugged in here, right? So I can't I don't want to unplug it. And I followed this cable, and it goes to this thing, which we call a snake. And so this is just like a breakout box, and we can move this closer to the piano if we had shorter XLR cables. Um, it's just a, a more convenient way than always having to run to, the, to a wall. Um, and so some of these look like they're taped off, meaning maybe something's broken with them. There's cable that runs through the walls to into the patch panel in the control room. So when it's broken, like it's a bigger deal than like me just going in and fixing it. Like you need somebody to deal with this. So um, it says here, these are normal to the mixer mic input one to 10. So if we were to plug in here, um, if you could plug those in, let's plug them in to two and three on this snake.
Sweet. All right, so now, yes, good. So I actually struggle to remember this as a, as a singer. Like, how do you know which thing the cables go into? Like, how do you know to put it in two and three versus 11 and 12? So it, it doesn't matter. You, you uh, just have to remember, right? So like, I don't actually know which mic. So it looks like the far mic. So the mic that's on the low strings looks like it's going into three. Um, and the high mic, high strings mic is going into two. Somebody just has to tell you in the old days, what we would do is we would take on our mixer, we'd take a piece of masking tape and put it on the bottom of all the channels of the mixer and we'd write Grace's vocal, right? Grace, drums, piccolo, right? You'd write what the instruments are so that you knew what it was for that day. So you just pick a random one and then remember for the day kind of thing? That's right. Okay. I could have picked any other one. Okay. Um, and it probably is, I, I probably would have been actually smarter to not use two because I know that the outputs are one and two, and but we'll, we'll just use two and three. Good question. All are equally fine. Some are broken, so those are not fine. I assume the tape one. Yeah, the yeah, tape. those cor correspond to those tapes, so that's good. Uh, so, um, all right, so now we've got mics plugged into the box. The box is going into the control room. Let's go to the control room and see the next part. We've plugged our mics into a patch panel, and that patch panel comes up over here on this patch bay. And so it looks daunting, right? It looks like, oh my god, what do I do? One went to one, two went to two, three goes to three. So that's showing me here, Studio A, patch panel A1 is normal into the mixer. This, it's not the Midas, it is, it is the Midas mixer. So it's normaled in. So anything that comes in on, we plugged into two and three. There's two and three here. It's gonna come up in two and three on this mixer. Um, the biggest difference with this is that uh, this top sort of control panel area relates to all of the different tracks, all, all of the channels. So instead of having like 10,000 knobs and dials on each one, we have to select what channel we're going to work on and then change the dials for that. So it's, it's, once you get into the habit of it, it's not so bad, but it's a little awkward, right? Because then you're like, I made a change and you're like, darn it, I had the wrong thing selected. Um, these are nice because you can save scenes on them. So like if you have, uh, you're doing a, a, a gig at a club and there's five bands that are gonna play in the night, you can do all their sound checks, save each one as a scene. So that when the second band comes up, you just move to the next scene and it's like already done for you. So that, that makes it convenient for live production. Uh, these speakers might be on a little bit. Yep. There. Is, can you still hear us? Is that better? Good. Uh, okay, thanks. Oh, okay. All right, good. So, um, so we said those came into two and three, they're normaled into two and three. So on this mixer, um, two and three are right here. If I'm on inputs one through 16, there is one through 16 and 17 through 32. So now they're double duty, it's even more confusing. We're just gonna use the first two. We don't need to, um, we don't need to care so much about it. So um, we have two mics plugged in, both need phantom power. So on this uh, mixer, some mixers you turn phantom power on for the entire board. This mixer, I believe it's per, uh, per track, so per channel. I do hear that echo again. Um, this speaker might be on a little bit on this, this computer itself. Um, so I've selected two here. And then I'm going to look and look and look and look to see where um, phantom power is. And so what I see here is um, 48 volt, which is phantom power. That's giving, providing power through that mic cable to the, to the microphone itself out there. So I'm going to select two and turn on phantom power. 
And then I'm going to select three and turn on phantom power. So now we have those two mics out there should be have a little green light on them now. I will just state a little for the record that there is a right order to this. So the mics are plugged in, XLR cables are plugged in, then I turned on phantom power. So if phantom power were on already and then we plugged into the mic, you might blow out your mic because the three XLR has the three X, L, and R, and if, they, if the X doesn't hit first, if it goes in at an angle or doesn't sit right, 48 volts is gonna go right to your mic and could blow the mic out. So um, always, always, always plug the mic in, then turn on phantom power. Which one again is phantom power? So here it's 48 volts. It'll be different on every mixer. It sure. is, yeah. So if I go back to, if I select one, you'll see that it's not turned on. Oh, okay. If I wanted to turn it on, I just put it on. And you can see when I do it, there's a little, there's a little jump, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So that's the spike. <laughs> that's the like send send power. Adjusting the gain on each of these um, strips so that it's not because it was way up, right? And it was clipping. We don't want to see the clip. We don't want to see red. Um, that's distortion. So I'm gonna just adjust this so that we're breaking into the orange. And a lot of mixers, this would be yellow. Um, it just depends on the mixer, but um, green is is good, but pretty low. Um, into the, into the orange or red, uh, into the orange or yellow is good. Not clipping, right? So I'm going to do that for each each of these mics. And don't don't be fooled by the volume in the studio here, right? Because I can just adjust the studio volume without it changing the signal at all, right? And this is the signal level that's going into logic. So this is what matters, not what I'm hearing on my headphones or in these speakers, right? Okay, so I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna share the screen again for you on Zoom. All right, hopefully you're here. Phantom power. Uh, yeah, it's super easy to forget to do this. So I'm going to turn off the phantom power, and then we can unplug those. And let's do the um, let's do the Royer in the red box. In the wood box. Yep. 
and anybody go and help. So you can go so and scary. do that. Did you not hear? Meaning, each there's kind of grid lines on both sides of this mic, so it's going to pick up from figure eight below and above. So what we want to make sure that we do is we angle them in the piano so that um, one side is facing the strings, one of the oh, just like this. So one side that's open is facing the strings, mm. and then the other side is towards the the lid. And let's do this one. Um, let's do this one X Y. Um, um, close to each other, not touching, and um, because they're going to be the and the yeah. So this is picking up top and bottom. So I would do something where it's over both low strings and high strings. Can you explain the X Y? What does it mean? So the X Y is we have three different pickup patterns, uh, three different styles of recording that we're going to try. So the last one we did was AB, which is that spaced pair, right, where the two microphones were kind of independently picking up. And Julia won't have seen it, but you'll hear it when we go back. You could really see in the recording that one mic was picking it up when picking up sound when you played high notes, and the other mic was picking it up when you played the low notes. And so then that that'll make a really broad stereo mix if you want. Like you can play with that after the fact. Um, this one will give you more of a unified stereo recording, and we're going to do the X Y pattern so that we uh, get a nice close, not missing any sound but we're putting it uh, directly above both sets of strings so that the high and lows are kind of both going to get picked up equally. And now this one, because we now know that these mics are figure eight pickup pattern, and they're going to be picking up from the, the top and the bottom, I might ask which sound do you think we want more of? I think probably the bottom. So I would personally, as a trial, right, let's put them a little closer to the strings than to the lid and hear if we like the sound of it. Would you get echo at that distance? Would I get echo? If it, uh, I don't think so, no. I, I don't think so. But we might get a nice little reverb.
you know. the Minecraft theme. Okay. Yeah, but you gotta take it to quiet because you're getting picked up by those mice. Okay, just something, something low, something boring. Like here's your phone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're changing mic. Like, oh, yeah, it's it's shot in mic. And so when in gen when when that happens, we should use it. Uh, the ones that we used for the Royer over here, you can see they say sure on them. I just grabbed them from the equipment room because they don't have we don't have the mic clips that came with the Royer anymore. Um, So given that these are shotgun mics that are very highly directional, um, how do we want to set them up? <coughs> do we want to do a couple of different ways? It picks up from the very end, yep. What might be interesting on, on these is let's do it X, Y, like we did the last one. But then after we do that, let's do it the other way so that we'll just kind of do opposite. And we'll see, because then it'll really, um, if we do these this way with one pointed high and one pointed low, I think it's going to be cool, actually. Yeah, I would. So, so pointing it in like this is a good idea. So this is actually picking up from that direction, right? So really, if you want to lift this up and point it down more towards the strings, I think you'll be happier. And then we'll ultimately, your ears are what matter in this scenario. So we're not, we're just running through a lot of different things here to try some stuff out. Ideally, you have one set of mics, right? You're, you've got your AKG 414s, you're going to spend two hours doing a bunch of tests, trying to figure out which position gives you a really beautiful sound based on the, the work that the pianist is playing, right? Like you tune it to the, to the time and place. 
and then go with that, right? You're not going to be moving mics in the middle of, of a performance or any of that. Yeah, so I'm actually going to, let's do this and put them even closer so that they're really not going to miss out on a, on a spot here. And so this one, this mic, is picking up this direction, right? And this one is going to pick up mostly lows. So maybe this one even, if we move, maybe if we just move this a hair and change the, change it so that these are more, Nope. I'm just going to... So this one is going to get both, right? This one will get both from the other direction. I think we, we can try that. Okay, so these, um, these are also condenser microphones, so I think we're going to need to turn that phantom power back on, on the board. Does somebody want to try to do that?
do some low notes, just single notes, and then high notes, just so we get a variety. changing to different direction. So this is two hours. Can you can you like that one? That one. That one. Oh, so uh, let's. Gio, can you stop the screen share on Zoom? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And let's do this. Let's even put them the ends closer to each other. Um, so there's there's um, there's uh, other terms that you so a spaced pair. Um, we talked about as A B. Um, proc, uh, near coincidence. So a coincident pair of microphones is X Y. When the two heads are really close to each other, that is coincident. This way, O R T F is near coincident, where they're close, but they're not like essentially touching each other. Um, and then spaced pair. And there's a whole lot of physics involved in how the microphones are picking up all of the waves that are coming into them. And when you think about, when you think about it in the simplest terms, back to our friend the sine wave, um, the microphones are picking up the sound as, it's, as the pressure waves are, are hitting the microphone. So when they're close to each other, um, they're picking up it, essentially the same time. When they're separating from each other, you can end up with a phase problem, which, depending on the pitch of, this, of the sound that you're recording, so how many cycles are happening and how far apart the microphones are, you can end up in a phase cancellation uh, setting. It's almost like when we talked about sampling, and if you sampled too infrequently, it never changed, right? It was always happening to catch the wave when it was crossing the zero point. And so phase cancellation only comes into play when you have more than one microphone in a space, right? Because then um, it matters. It doesn't really matter with one microphone if you're catching it on the upswing or the downswing because it's getting all of it, right? But when you sum the two waves together, are they going to cancel? And you may notice when we go back into the studio on each of those channel strips on the mixer, right next to that 48 volts is a little circle with a line through it. That's phase. And so you can actually, instead of moving the microphone, if you hear, if you add a microphone and the volume goes down, you know you've got some kind of weird phase problem going on. Sometimes you can hear it too, right? It's almost a little bit like uh, Ray. It's almost a little like flanging. Um, uh, so that it's it just changes the quality and you haven't added any actual effect. It's just a physical phenomenon, right? So um, some mixers have this nice phase switch on them so that you can just go boop and then it will solve that problem. It happens a lot with drums because often if you're, if you're trying to mic a drum kit, you might have eight different mics, one on each of the drums, 
and it's pretty easy to have those get out of phase with each other. Um, so, so that only in a fancy pants mixer would it have that phase switcher. If you don't have it on your mixer, what would you do? Maybe place the microphone so that they don't hit each other out. That's right. So any, you can slightly move one of the microphones and it will, and it will solve the phase problem. So um, always go with your ears. jump to the highs. This one's going to be bright. Right. This is the other one. Right? Yeah. Huge difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then here's the uh, shotgun in XY mode. Tinny. I'm not I'm not happy with that base. And then here it is in the ORTM mode. Let's just compare A B. Here it is the other way. So pretty different, and we didn't really like fine tune any of it. We just sort of slap them up there. We didn't really try like what would happen if we moved them to all the high end, or put them over here, or put them in front where the pianist is sitting. Like get the, what the pianist hears as they're playing. Like there's so many different ways. So in in Canvas this week, um, there's a bunch of different 
um, uh, videos in there of, of pianos being mic'd in different ways. And what I like about the videos is that you can just do this. You can jump around and hear A, B right after each other, because it's hard to, for me to hear one and then the next, right? If I can just jump back and forth between them, I can get some idea of the difference between them. So I would encourage you to, to, try, to try that. I will send this file out, so I'll normalize this. Um, I'll send it out with my announcement when that goes out. Normal situation, I think I would really just use one mic on a piano. Um, I'm, you know, everybody has their bias about what they like. I, in almost all cases, I choose an AKG 414 for, for almost everything. I, I love that mic um, because it gives a nice, strong, clear signal and lets you really adjust it. So you can change the pickup pattern. Um, based on the scenario, right? Like having a switchable polar pattern is, is really flexible. So if you're gonna invest in a decent quality mic, um, having that ability gives you a lot more choices um, than spending a little bit more money and then only having a cardioid pickup pattern. Was it the first? That was the first Flags. one. First one. Pretty, pretty uh, bright though, right? Like those highs. Um, and so, off? On that. There is a so there's a there is a setting that you can roll off the highs on that mic. Um, there's a switch on on them, um, and so you can either drop off the lows or drop off the highs a little bit and um, get a different sound out of it. Also, um, and if I had just the one mic, um, I I would do two different tests. I would put it in the piano like we just did, um, and listen to that. And then I would do the awkward, weird thing, which is I would put it where the pianist is sitting, um, depending on the pianist, and hear what the pianist is hearing. Um, and I would especially do that if the pianist were playing without sheet music, right? Because the, the lid that holds the sheet music is going to block a lot of sound um, coming at the microphones. So you'd want to um, you, you'd want that off. You can actually take that whole thing off the piano. Um, and get a different sound there, because often the, a pianist is making adjustments based on what they're hearing as they're playing. And sometimes, depending on the pianist, like as soon as we said we were recording, you got nervous and probably played worse than you would normally play, because not only were we all here, but then there was this like nervousness of being recorded like you've all experienced already right yeah. so if you can if if you're the recording engineer and not the performer you want to do everything you can to make the performer comfortable mm -hmm. right and if that means I'm gonna put the mic behind you and still get a good recording that's what I'm gonna do right if they start playing differently because the mic is visible to them then we've got a problem um, so then it comes our challenge then to make them sound good no matter what. Um, and that is a lot of interpersonal stuff too, right? Like how do you talk to your talent? How do you, you know, make them comfortable? Do you not tell them that you're recording? Like if I, if I hadn't have told you, you that I was recording that, maybe it would have been different or better, right? Like there's just, so there's, you'll come up with that. Um, but there's certainly a, a lot of sort of interpersonal communication um, parts of being in a studio. Yeah, just out of curiosity, if we were going to do, say, like vocal disorder badly, right? Like what mic in the studio would we use for that? Again, you could use any one that you wanted. I, okay. I I would use the AKG 414. Um, although I, I take that back. That twelve hundred dollar Neumann is gorgeous on vocals. Was that the last ones we just used, or was the middle? No, we didn't use them today. We didn't. Use we them. did not use them today. That's the one that you have to use in the studio with somebody holding your hand. Uh, <laughs> so like, but you would still use it in the studio. Yeah. But with like supervision. Yeah. I mean, it, it just depends, right? It really depends on your voice. We, uh, we took two microphones. We talked about different ways to um, set them up so that you could get a nice stereo recording. We did space pair AB, coincident pair XY, or ORTF, near coincident. And we tried out those three different ways with three different microphones. And we ran XLR cables into the snake 
from the patch panel in the studio and had it come through our patch panel here in the control room. The sound is normal to the mixer, came into the mixer. We set our uh, input level for each of those microphones. We made sure that we were using phantom power when we needed it and turning it off before we plugged or unplugged any of our microphones. Uh, and then we recorded those two microphones each into its own track in Logic and then played them back to get an idea of what those mics sound like. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay.